The most common unit used to measure the size of angles is the degree. The degree was developed by the Babylonians 4,000 years ago. I'm sure most of you are familiar with that unit of measure. Another measure of angles is the radian. It is used extensively in calculus and other advanced mathematical applications. Most students are not as familiar with this unit of measure. Hello, my name is Tom Atwater, and in this section we will explore both these methods for measuring angles. Then we will solve some very interesting applications using what we have learned about the angle measure. Before we can measure an angle or work with angles and applications, we need to define exactly what makes up an angle and how the angle is formed. Let's look at some basic terminology that will be used in this section. We have a line AB, which is a line extending in both directions passing through the points A and B. We have line segment AB, which is a section of a line. It has two endpoints, in this case, A and B. We have ray AB, which has an endpoint at A, but continues on to infinity, passing through the point B. In the next diagram that I show you, we're going to take two rays who share a common endpoint, and they form what is called an angle. An angle has two rays, one which is called the initial side, and one which is called the terminal side. It has a vertex A, which is where the common endpoint for the two rays exists. Now that we know what an angle looks like, we're going to talk about how to measure an angle. And there are two ways we can measure the angle, both positive and negative. And the way we do it is we look at the initial side and how much of a rotation is to the terminal side. So on the left-hand side, we have this angle where the initial side is lying along the x-axis. When we measure counterclockwise, we're measuring positive angles to the terminal side. When we're doing negative angles, again, in this example, the initial side lies along the x-axis, and we go clockwise to the terminal side to measure the angle, and in this case, it's negative. Next, what I want to do is talk to you about actually measuring the angles themselves. We have the basic understanding of the terminology, but here we have an angle uh, that we want to find the value of k and then find the actual measure of these two angles. What you'll notice is that in this example, this is a right angle, which means that these two angles are called complementary because they add up to 90 degrees. So in this example, we're measuring it in degrees, and now let's figure out how that works. So we have to take the two angles, add them together. So the first angle we have is 5K plus 5. The second angle we have is equal to 3K plus 5, and that adds up to 90 degrees. So 5K and 3K gives me 8K. Then I have plus 5, and 5 is 10 for 90. So 8K is equal to 80. K is equal to 10. So that's the value for K, but now what we need to do is actually calculate what each of the angles is by plugging K back in. So we have 5 times 10 plus 5, which gives me 55 degrees for the first angle. Then we have 3 times 10 plus 5, and that adds up to 35 degrees, which of course we would expect because we knew that these were complementary, which is to say they added up to 90 degrees, and 55 and 35 gives us 90 degrees. Let's take a look at an angle in standard position, which means that its vertex is at the origin and its initial side is along the positive x-axis. So here we have 
An example of an angle, you can see the initial side along the positive x-axis, and the terminal side, in this case, falls in what's called quadrant one. This is called an acute angle because it's an angle that's between zero and 90 degrees. Whereas, this is an example of an obtuse angle. Again, its initial side lies along the positive x-axis, and its terminal side, in this case, lies in quadrant two. And in, what that means for an obtuse angle is that it's an angle that's between zero degrees and 180 degrees. In both of these cases, we've generated a positive angle. Now, let's look at angles which share the same initial and terminal side, but have different amounts of rotation, and those are called coterminal angles. Now, what coterminals have in common besides the terminal side is that they are a measure of th some multiple of 360 degrees compared to the original angle. Let's look at some examples. So here we have a, an initial measure of 60 degrees, and here's its terminal side. Of course, its initial side is lying along the positive x-axis. So for the 420 degree angle, what happens is we have a full 360 degrees plus now the 60 degrees to give us the total of 420 degrees. So that's one example. Let's take a look at this one. In this case, the initial angle of 110 degrees, and then we have uh, 830 degrees, which represents two full rotations, 360 degrees each, so two full rotations of 720 plus the 110 to give us the total of 830. And one more example, here we have an initial angle of negative 75 degrees, which again starts on the positive x-axis, goes in the clockwise direction, and here's its terminal side. Well, if we go for a positive angle, notice that we would go around 285 degrees, and that would give us the same coterminal angle. And what you'll notice is negative 75 plus 360 degrees is going to equal our 285 degrees. All right, now what I'd like to do with you is to actually find some measures of coterminal angles. So here's an example. Find the angle of the smallest positive measure that is coterminal with negative 40 degrees. Since the angle is negative, we will add a multiple of positive 360 degrees. And that we will obtain an angle that is a result greater than zero, but still less than 60. So we take 360 plus the negative 40. And then we end up with, of course, 320 degrees. And that gives us a positive angle that is coterminal with negative 40 degrees. Let me show you a graphic of that picture. We can draw negative 40, which has its initial side along the positive x-axis. We go down negative 40. And that's our angle. For the 320 degrees, we're going to go positive. That's 180. This is 270. And then we go an additional 50, right? And we get our 320 degree angle, which is coterminal with the negative 40.